Hello and welcome to The Secret Show on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer. Mark Sargent is here with me. Hello, Mark. Hello, Patricia. No hat for you today. What's up? What's going no, on? No okay? hat because I just had my haircut. Oh, all right, all right. Well, this is a special show. We're going to do the things we normally do. There may be cats and there may be some laughs. There may be some tears. Uh, there's no guarantees on Flat Earth. <laughs> We're going to look at the uh, Illuminati card deck again, as we've been doing each Wednesday in the past. We're going to discuss the videos, the mixers, the meetups, read some emails, plus go into the live chat and say hi. But we've got some special guests here in my house. We have Carrie, a journalist, and Mark, a photographer, and they are from the Houston Chronicle. And uh, just want them to kind of pop over here and say hello. Carrie, you, you first. <laughs> Hi. Uh, come over here and say, I want to ask you a question. Let me interview you for just a quick second. How long have you been with the Houston Chronicle? You didn't expect this part. How long have you been with the Chronicle? Uh, I just moved here in September, and I was a journalist in New York before that. Oh, wow. Interesting. So how'd you get stuck with writing a story on flat earth? Um, I, I really enjoy writing about weird things. <laughs> All right. That's a good answer. <laughs> Well, you're in the right place. Exactly. Thanks for uh, letting me interview you briefly. Okay, Mark, you've got a giant cannon here with a huge lens and a Rode microphone there. And then you've got this here. Come over here so people can meet you. Let's let's hear a little bit about you, Mark. Come and squish down, squish down a little bit so we can see your face. Are you from Houston? Uh, I am a Houston native. Actually, uh, yeah. And uh, what got you into being a, a photojournalist, I guess you'd call what you do, right? Uh you know, it, uh, that's, a, that's a hard question. I don't have many other skills. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he wanted to be a photojournalist is what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a rancher. Yeah. So, I wanted to be uh, a lumberjack. You get to, you get to meet, uh, I don't know, different people every day. So that's what I like. About. All right. Cool. Thank you both for coming in. And they're going to be snapping pictures and doing their thing while we're doing our thing. And then at some point, they're going to usher themselves out of the door because they have other things to do other than hang out with all of us for, for two solid hours. But Carrie had a question that she wanted to ask us both live during the show for us to answer. So um, it's may become part of the article that's going to be coming out shortly on Flat Earth in the Houston Chronicle. So Carrie, come back over here and ask this question and then Mark and I will do our best to see what, what kind of answer we can come up with. And oh, also I invite the, the live audience too. Uh, I'll look and chat and maybe they have something they'd like to add, but Carrie, go ahead with your question. Okay, I just wanted a quick like two minute argument as to why our readers should believe that the earth is flat. Like, quick and dirty answer. All right. Got it. Do you want me to? Uh, let's just do it together. Do you want to take the dirty part or the, the quick part? <laughs> oh, no, I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do the quick part real quick. And then... I'll do the dirty part because it's truth. Now you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to touch that one. There's an innuendo all over it. But <sighs> uh, the quick part would be this. How do you know? And of course, the listeners are already going to know some of this. How do you know you are on a globe right now? And when I throw that at you, you are eventually going to lean on some sort of space agency. And that's going to be NASA or the Europeans or the Japanese or whoever it's going to be. And I say, okay, fine, fine, fine. How do you know? How did you know before they were around? Because if NASA was founded in 1958, they didn't take the first picture until 1972. It's not like we woke up in the 70s to find out that the earth was a globe. So how did you know before the space agencies? And then you're gonna have to think a little harder. And eventually you're gonna, you're gonna say the words, which we all love to hear, science told us. So then I come back to you and I say, what exactly did science tell you? What do you remember about science? What are you gonna do? If you're lucky, you might do the sticks and shadows thing. Maybe, but most people say, well, boats go over, going over the horizon, but I go, okay, cool. give me a, give me a date. Give me a name tied to that experiment. It's never been done. So eventually your wheels are going to have to start spinning. And I'm not going to be able to convince you guys whether you're here 15 minutes or two hours. All I can do is put, put the, the seed in your head, which basically says, how do you know? Don't, we, we, I treat this like a court case. And that is the flat earth doesn't necessarily have to prove flat earth right off the bat, but we can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that when you go home and try to do your own research, you're never going to be able to finish the puzzle. You're never going to be able, like all, like all of us, nobody started out, and I know I'm going to start rambling here, but I'm, I'll stop real, real quick. Nobody starts out thinking that the flat earth is a great idea. 
everybody starts out doing the same thing. It's like, okay, I'm going to shut down flat earth. I'm going to prove the globe. Prove the globe. That's where you have to start. And once you start going down there, you're going to realize how very thin it is. That's my quick one. All right. Another thing that would be great to mention so it could go into the uh, Houston Chronicle would be some resources for learning more about Flat Earth. And I know that when Carrie was here at my house earlier, we talked so much about that. And I, uh, videos, um, I think ODD Flat Earth in Five Minutes is a great intro video. Sure. That perhaps could be stuck in that article so that somebody who is new to it would be able to click on that video and in five minutes at least get a good good grip of what's going on. Do you have any others in mind that you think would be great? Um, yeah. In fact, there's an entire playlist which you can go to. Just go onto YouTube or, or whatever search engine and type in the Flat Earth shortlist for new people. And that is a series of videos uh, between 20 and 25 videos ranging from five minutes to two hours long. Pick and choose anything you want. It, it covers a, a wide range of topics. The, you know, we could, we could, I could rattle off a whole bunch of stuff, little, little talking points, but that list will get you going. That's, and, that's where I would start people. And my and, stuff isn't even in it. And stoplookthink.com is a great website that's got information on all sorts of things, but right. Flat Earth is right there. There's a Flat Earth section. So, and if, if the readers are looking for a religious angle, I would point them at testingtheglobe.com. And celebrate truth. That's another. And celebrate one. truth and Zen Garcia, but you know that uh, uh, Rob was the first. Yes, uh, yes. Steve was the first, so he's got a great website out there. But there's, there's so all there's a channels. ton of resources at this point. Yeah, there's a channel called Bro Sanchez that's right. great. Uh, D Marble is great. Uh, there's so many people. I don't want to start naming no, names yeah, because it's, it's too many. Uh, it'll be overwhelming. And also there'll be people that later I think about and think, oh, I left them out. And, you know, there's no way to cover everybody. So the Flat Earth uh, playlist for new people that you mentioned. And Flat Earth shortlist. Think, Flat Earth shortlist for new people, for new people that you mentioned. And that also. covers everybody from ODD to Marty Leeds to uh, DJ Harris. To, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people in there. And none of them are you. So it's not. None of them are me. I don't think your, your cuckoo views. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let me go into the live chat and see if there's some suggestion that anybody else has to the answers that you just gave to Carrie about why people should believe. Well, I don't think anybody should believe why sh people should look into the flat earth. Um, and my well, answer and, and, is because it's truth. Um, well, let me, let me add the, the D I T R H quote, which is the T is the t-shirt. And that is, I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth. Again, nobody, including me, I, it, everyone thinks it's a horrible idea. And when they try to snuff it out, then they become a flat earther. It's kind of like the uh, La Brea tar pits. Really? Yeah, you know exactly. that is? You try to help somebody out of it? Nope, you're sucked in. They try to help somebody? Nope, you're sucked in. <laughs> exactly. Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson, though, I believe truly that he's never looked into it. He can't. Not seriously, no. M much like Stanton Friedman when he got into that thing with me and we're 10 minutes into the debate and he all of a sudden he stops and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. You're talking about this like it's a real thing. Like it's not a metaphor for something. Flat Earth is like a physical model. And I'm going, I'm going, yeah, yeah, exactly what I'm saying. He's going, you know, you get that pause and it's like, well, how does that work? And it's like, oh my God. Then we have to, you know, pull out the, you know, pull out the map. <laughs> or maps, one of the maps, and say, okay, start, you know, start here. A lot of people say, well, you Flat Earthers have an, an agreed upon map. Um, and I know Carrie, before we went live, was mentioning to me, there's the ice wall contingent, there's the endless plane contingent. Right. But not having an agreed upon map doesn't mean anything. Because if you look at the society and remove Flat Earth, the the matrix we used to live in before we came to this, uh, people don't agree on anything. Some people are all all about vaccines, and some people will would never vaccinate their child. Yeah. Um, you know, some people are vegan, and some people have a what appears to be an all meat diet. Uh, just everyone that you in your neighborhood probably has a different belief system, maybe a different religion, a different way of even you know tying their shoes. So there is no agreed upon anything. But at there all. is one thing we can all agree upon. Um, and that is that is th this thing. The globe is yeah. A globe. The is globe is throw, dead. Throw that out. Exactly. Definitely can agree on that. All right. Well, I think I might have answered your question, Carrie. What do you think? 
Unless you got follow up questions, most people yeah. do. Follow up questions. All right, all right, awesome. <laughs> is she a scientist? Is she like a amateur astronomer? Did she study a lot of physical science in college? No, I'm a journalist. Journalist. Oh, then she's fine. She'll be okay. <laughs> she <Well>, knows. <laughs> <laughs> they just said we didn't study anything. <laughs> there you go. We're journalists. Well, no. <laughs> no, she knows a good story when when she sees it, and it's an interesting story. At the very yeah. least, flat Earth. I will say this: love it or hate it, which is why you know the producers have been coming in droves lately. Love it or hate it, you can't ignore the topic, which is why I think if it eventually turns into some sort of television show, it will become the end of civilization as we know it. And Neil deGrasse Tyson will have been proved right. The end of civilization as we know it sounds scary for anybody who well, might be watching different, this. Well, or... different type. We're not talking about people running around with axes. We're just talking about people sitting on the couch watching the show and then just getting in fights. That doesn't sound very pleasant. Well, you know. To some people it does, I guess you. <laughs> okay. It's ratings. That's true. <laughs> Flat Earth would be a ratings winner. It <laughs> would. It would be a huge ratings win. A ratings killer, as they would say. Yeah, there you go. You can. You know the stories. Is it the worst television ever? Or is it genius? No one will be able to decide. It'll be fantastic. Do you think there ever will be a Flat Earth show like that? I do. I really, really do. Mm, how long? How many years? not long at all the way the phone's been ringing and so would it be a documentary or do you think it would be it, reality? It'll be, all, it'll be Simon whoever gets to it first it'll be a, the documentary people already are ahead of the oh, game yeah. we know about that yeah so we, you know but television shows can be produced very very quickly so it's we'll have to see so will that be the end of flat earth making it into a joke some say no because you can well it depends who you get you you know what we've talked about how yeah you, you, if you wanted to, you could create a fake flat Earth show. You make up, grab some people, train, you know, train them on some dialogue, and let them go, and we wouldn't have any idea. Right? So, be like, who are these people? I didn't yeah, know Snooki. Social media though has changed that. They would be vetted so quickly. They'd be like, I didn't know Snooki and the situation were flat earthers. <laughs> exactly. Or that, or that guy from uh, Team Ten. Oh crap! What's his name again? Oh yeah, that singer, that young guy. Oh, singer. it's not. He is not a singer. I don't know. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Well, hopefully that won't happen. Uh, hopefully, if anything ever does happen, it will be real people who are really flat earthers, who exactly. really are committed. And we I don't want to say, see, I know I don't want to see that guy make a brand new song called "It's Flat Every Day, Bro." I don't want to see it. <laughs> but it is flat every day, bro. <laughs> oh, don't give him, you know we shouldn't give him ideas. Yeah, you're right. I got to get the copyright to that and all the subsidiary rights right now. Well, let's see. Uh, Ginger Sugarbush in our live chat says they can use REM's End of the World or Man on the Moon for the theme song if they ever did a, did a show. I actually like both those songs, and I I say yes. That's a great idea. Or Owl City, Fireflies. All oh, that's, that's the, true. The video is very soft. flat earth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, we have a bunch of people here, and if anybody has anything that they would like to add to, potentially anyway, the Houston Chronicle article on Flat Earth, there's something that you feel needs to be said, speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh, um, you know what we should, we should have them do, the, the audience, is we should, have, we should queue them up in advance for the article and whatever the email address is for the Houston Chronicle, because people will write in on both sides. Oh, true. Do we do we know do we know whose email address is going to be used if if people want to comment on the article? In mm, advance? Gary's giving me that uh, face. We don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, now, do you think that this article indeed is going to run, or is oh, there? Totally. Oh, totally. Yeah. No matter what. I didn't put. I'm not coming to your house repeatedly and putting all this time into. <laughs> I don't know. If, were you able to see hear that? She said, "I'm not coming to your house repeatedly for no reason, not to uh, <laughs> not to do an article." Well, no, no. I let's put it this way: when the Denver Post did their thing. They had gone to two different meetups, and but they had transferred it over. They, it, the rumor was they had transferred it from one reporter to a senior reporter, and we didn't know. We we had no word from anybody, and so I literally contacted them the day before, and I said, "Are you killing this?" He goes, "No, it's going to run tomorrow." Had no idea the impact it was going to have, though. Hmm. And then their emails blew up, just exploded. That's so. what Carrie just said. That's how she heard about it was from the Denver Post article. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, so they're still they're still getting mail on on this. I think it's exciting. I think as a writer, it gives you a chance to uh, you know forget the topic. Although for us flat earthers, the topic is all that really matters. But for you as a writer, because you will go on to write other stories about other things, it's a great opportunity to have more and more more people look at your work who might not have before because the topic is so shocking that they'll go, "What the? Let me read about this." And then right. you know. You yeah, get the hate mail. <laughs> the the oh, first knee jerk reaction is always the same. It's like, no, no, this is like a parody of something. You're not actually, this isn't actually really a thing. In fact, the article I was going to read, um, I wanted to read on this with the yes. little short thing from the, uh, the Philadelphia newspaper. Let's do that now. You want me to do that real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay. So this is from the Philly Voice, and it's an interesting article. It's different from the others. It's not very long, and it's written by Brian Hickey. And you can email him directly, and and he responds. I, I he we wrote back a couple times. His uh, email is h i c k e y at phillyvoice dot com, and the article is called "Did Flat Earth Site Decline Fifty Thousand Dollar Offer to Run an Astronaut Documentary Ad?" All right. It's been 36 days since we last brought you a report from the front lines in the battle pitting flat earthers against those who believe our planet is round. Much has happened in those seven weeks and a day. We've learned that middle school science teachers worry that students are siding with a basketball player who falls into the former camp over established theories that maintain the latter. And yet there were some heated scuttlebutt about Facebook banning flat earth content which is apparently fake. Plus, the Flat Earth International Conference, scheduled for November 9th and 10th in North Carolina, is already sold out. And that Marisa Keeland, go figure, the woman who funded the Flat Earth billboard in Tosa, Oklahoma, was badly injured in a car wreck on July 4th. What hasn't garnered any headlines in that time is the story of how flat earth conspiracy theorists rejected a $50,000 offer, which is the subject line of an email I received last week. It revolves around the documentary 250 Miles Up, which apparently delves into the story of NASA astronaut Linda Godwin and appears slated for a September release. I say apparently because the trailer on Facebook is just a 49 second video of a rocket launch. Per the movie poster, it is an Evermind Films production and an IMDB search reveals that this is the only entry in Evermind Films filmography. Two weeks ago, a write-up in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch about the film noted that writer and director Morgan Johnson hopes his film will be screened at NASA's Cinespace Film Festival. We should attend that or send some people. Mm. The writer of that contributed piece, Stephen Tallow, dropped a line to let me know that there was more to the story, like much more. To wit, filmmaker Morgan Johnson trolled the number one flat earth organization in the world. I thought it would be in the United States. The Indonesian-based conspiracy group is the most well-known on the planet, according to Google Trends. They call themselves the Flat Earth 101 channel and have over 50,000 followers on social media. Jo Johnson offered them a whopping $50,000 US to advertise his NASA-related documentary, 250 Miles Up, on their website. But the reality was the film poster would be a bit too offensive for Flat Earth believers. Johnson frustratingly mentioned, I couldn't believe groups with this belief still existed this day and age. Even some really famous people believe this, not the most educated, mind you. I'm just really irritated that they didn't accept my offer. I would have been, it would have been a win-win for both of us. <clears throat> Whatever. He says he will stay positive and look for more open-minded media sites to promote his film. But until then, all we can wonder is how in the world are there flat earth conspiracies in the year 2017? Well, that surely, that's surely some top-notch trolling. To be fair, though, the 50,000 followers estimate sold them a little short. Flat Earth's YouTube page hosts of 93,000 subscribers and more than 10.8 million views. I don't know. Oh, Flat Earth's YouTube page. Really, is this a generic flat earth YouTube page? Not that I know. With an additional 11,000 members in a closed Facebook group. I'd hope to speak with representative of the Indonesia based Flat Earth 101 channel about this offer and the reasoning behind turning it down. Alas, they did not respond to a pair of messages sent on Tuesday morning. If they do respond, however, this story will assuredly be updated. I think it's, of course, 
exactly what we would expect that any flat earth group or flat earther that would be given lots of money to put a NASA ad on their channel would turn it down flat, no matter how much money it was. Turn it down uh, flat. Really? Yeah, exactly. Really? Yeah. But, uh, no, you, so the, so the question and fodder for the chat room is, yes. as you can imagine, because Americans are a little different. I mean, who knows with the Indonesian group, what was going on there? You know, maybe they didn't trust some international thing. Would they get paid? Would they not? But would the American flat earthers, take such a bribe i don't know no, i mean i can't obviously because you know you're you're basically right. taking money to be ostracized from the community once the the community found out that you, right that you did but this, here's you did another it. thought i've watched plenty of youtube videos and some of the commercials that come on the skippable video ads because i don't have ad blocker are for things like nasa they're things like that that, that involve things that are against most of our belief systems so, you know, maybe somebody would take the money if there was a greater payoff where it would get more exposure or you know, it's one of those things. But I'd say no. That would be my general answer. No. Yeah. I, it's, a, it's a tough call. But I mean, again, it's a one time deal. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there would, would be people, but they're probably thinking short term because right. if you took it, that's it. You're done. You know, yeah. you take it and, you know, you're going to have to find something else to do because. You're not going to be doing Flat Earth anymore. You might be ostracized. Oh, a bit, yes. But, but I interesting. It, it, mm, in this community, so many people do so many things yeah. that are pretty bad and they don't get ostracized. In fact, they get pats on the back sometimes. Personally, so, I, I think the, the Philly reporter, I think he's now, he's secretly flat, much like the Denver guy. And much how I feel, given my limited knowledge of, of Kerry, that uh, uh, she probably will fall into that camp as well, you know, sooner rather than later. But we'll see. Yeah, well, you know, you mentioned a, a little while ago um, when you were reading the article about the uh, the Flat Earth billboard in Oklahoma and Marissa Keeland. Yeah. Well, there's a fundraiser for her and Chad Norman still going on, and it's being done on Facebook. And I share it often on my page on Facebook and on the Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes public page. Here's some feedback. Kind of weird. Where did that come from? What is not music, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's an ice cream truck. Is it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you sounded so happy and nice as I'm reading about a very tragic story. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good timing, ice cream truck. Little, 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 little. Um, Marissa Keeland and Chad Norman got in this big wreck in July, and their car looked like it had been compacted to be thrown away in a in a, a dump it was a, a, just a small little crushed box they're lucky to be alive and there is a fundraiser and i will share it once again on my facebook for flat earth and other hot potatoes and my patricia steer facebook uh you, you won't need to even be a friend you'll just need to have facebook to find that because i post publicly so um they're trying to raise some more money because obviously they want to be able to help these people out because these medical bills are going to be shall I say the word crushing, because they really will be. Yeah. So I'm going to share that again right now, and you can donate if you would like to help. So I'm going to share it as we speak. So um, what else you got? You sent me something about Fox just uh, before we started our show. Oh, no, no, no. It was, Mark and Carrie. That's, it's little, that's an inside joke between you and I. It's, oh, uh-oh. But, but I will. I what it is now. <laughs> no, no, you'll, you'll totally dig it when you see it. Okay. The the um, no. What I was going to mention was the meetups. If anyone wants to know what's going on with the meetups, there just type in Flat Earth Meetup into YouTube. You'll you'll get to them. But I have to announce the one that is coming next week after I go to Atlanta. Okay, let me get the the, the quick announcements out of the way. Real Everybody fast. has been asking me when's Mark doing the Seattle meetup? When's he doing it? And I okay, said, the next the know. the Seattle meetup is going to be next Tuesday. At I believe it's seven o'clock at D Marble. In fact, uh, uh, somebody that D Marble knew was the guy that was organizing it. It's going to be at a bar next to Safeco Field in downtown Seattle, and that's going to be next Tuesday. I will be attending this. This is not the HBO filmed one. Uh, we're still trying to figure out when that one's going to happen. So because remember they were we were going to do a Seattle meetup that HBO is going to show up and and film these guys submarined me. And so now they're going to do this. It's like, okay, well, so it, there may be two Seattle meetups fairly close to each other, but this one's going to happen first. So, so you have no idea when the HBO one's going with to happen. No idea when the HBO thing's going to happen, but that was because remember they were saying, okay, we'd like to, we want to film when there's some activity happening. 
And well, I mean, I suppose I could call them real quick and, and say, hey, look, there's going to be a Seattle meetup. Maybe they'll maybe they'll show up. But I didn't want to necessarily push them if I didn't have to. You know how newspaper and media people are totally unreliable. Exactly. <laughs> you can't count on them. <laughs> Except for Carrie. She's a gem. Yeah, exactly. And Mark here with the, and with Mark. the camera. <laughs> He'll take brilliant shots. The um, uh, there's there's port, there's one down in Oregon. There's two in Los Angeles this week. Uh, I think the Colorado, yeah, two, two happening in Colorado simultaneously also this week. Just if you want to have a list of them all, just type in Flat Earth Meetup. Also, I'm going to be in Atlanta at the global versus flat earth.com conference. That's got Zen Garcia versus Dr. Stephen Pigeon. I am going to be there heading down there uh, day after tomorrow. I'm coming back Sunday. Also, quick, uh, Rob Skiba and Amber Plaster are going to be at TakeOnTheWorld17.com. That's September 15th and 17th in Cleveland, Ohio. And, of course, you guys already know, I'm not going to beat the, the national conference into the ground. You guys already know about that one. Yeah, that's a big so. one. It's a big one. Um, I'm going to be in Michigan at the Flat Earth Michigan Meetup. That is going to be Flat Earth Bowling, believe it or not, later on this month on the 24th of August. And I haven't picked a bowling alley yet. Uh, I will put a link in the description box of videos when I do. I should probably get on that this week. Did, did you hear somebody call in on the show last night and asked about that? No, did they? I listened yeah, to they called in and said, I heard Patricia is going to be doing something in Michigan. I go, not <laughs> yeah. just something. Bowling. It's flat earth bowling. It's going to be flat earth bowling. That's right. And I'm going there because my niece, um, Ashley, is getting married in Battle Creek, Michigan. And that's why it's going to be in Battle Creek, Michigan. I right thought on. earlier I had said it would be in Grand Rapids, but that's it's not where they're getting married. That's where they live. And, and just so you know, I will not be doing, and I, I know people have been bugging me about this, I am not going to be simulcasting Strange World from the meetup next Tuesday. Why? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's radio. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be completely lost on, on TFR because, you know, you're going to be wandering around. But two, the, the biggest reason is because I've done several meetups and so have you. I want to talk to the people. Yes, you I, know, I, I I don't want to have it skipped. Like, look, so TFR is like four 26-minute segments with breaks. And it's like, eh. Plus, you, know, you I'd have rather to just... be able to hear with TFR. It's different than doing Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I'm going to be in a bar unless, right. yeah, unless you have video. Now, that being said, if, some, if people that go there want to stream this thing, hey, have fun with it. Put some rub some funk on it, you know, make it really, really cool. Uh, I will, I'll be totally part of that, but I'm not going to be, and yeah, I, I'll walk around with you and, and, you know, talk to people, but I really, I, it's, it's all about, you know, it's just the camaraderie when you go there. So that's, that's what, so I'm next strange world's going to be a rerun. I am not taking a laptop or anything with me. I'm just going to go down there. Uh, we've got uh, Felix Siam, who is a Michigander, and I guess maybe even if I was born out, outside of the Seattle area in Spokane, uh, I, I grew up at, partially in Michigan. She says, Battle Creek sucks. I was just there. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? that's where my niece wants to get married and because she went to college there and that they're getting married there. So at the county everybody, or something. Everybody that grows up in a town has some sort of you know, you have a tie to it. Some sort of bias against it. I mean, I've been to beautiful cities around the country. What if they don't have a bowling alley? Wouldn't that be horrible? I'm promoting this bowling event and they don't, every town's right, got where, a bowling alley, it? right? Where is it? Look it up for me. Battle Creek? <laughs> Battle Creek, Michigan. Bowling right. alley. The right. most disgusting, funky one you can find with uh, probably, um, what do you call it? Foot fungus in all the bowling shoes, please. See if you can there find that There are two. <laughs> Oh, good. There are two within driving distance. One is okay. Bolero Lanes. Bolero? Bolero, formerly Not Keys. And the other is M66 Bowl, which I think is tied to the highway, which is because the high, the road next to it is 66. Interesting. So, I wonder. We, I'll look online and see which one is better, cooler, more interesting. I don't know. Uh, Bolero seems like it's open more often. Like M66 isn't even open today. And today's Wednesday. Okay. We don't want a bowling alley that's just decides randomly to close on the day. <laughs> well, no, maybe. Well, you know, I mean, bowling isn't low it, what it used to be. So. Oh my gosh. I used to love bowling in the seventies. My parents were in bowling leagues in the sixties when yeah. I was a little girl. I that was, was in... the thing to do. It was the thing to do on the TV show, the honeymooners and the thing to do on the Flintstones cartoon. And my it's parents a, did it. It's a long season. And I was in two corporate bowling teams, uh, won two titles with them, Ooh. and well, pff, it's bowling. But the season is nine it's not months. It's easy to bowl. It appears easy, but it's not. 
Well, it, it takes some doing. It takes some practice. But it's it's not the season is nine months long. Literally bowling, you bowl for nine months. You can have a baby in the time. The yeah, time you only that. take off summers. That's it. And then you got to get back into it. And it's not cheap. I mean, the, the bowling fees aren't that bad, but the money is it, – in fact, we one of our corporate teams was called Beer and Smokes. I mean, you are drinking a lot of beer, and mm. you're eating a lot of crappy food every right. week, and it's just not – Well, not when great. I was in the high school – or junior high, actually, in the 70s, I got involved in a bowling league, and after school one, it didn't have anything to do with school. And I was so into it, I had, and so did my sister, my own bowling shoes and my own bowling ball with my initials on it. Yeah, I was a geek. Right. And it was so fun. Oh, by the way, the um, and I did not pick the, the bar. Do you know what the name of the bar is that we're going to in Seattle? Mm. Mm. The, the Pyramid Bar. Oh, no. They're going to have a true. full day with that. And you know what that means? That means... That's a segue into Illuminati dun, Confirmed. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Do you want, want me do you want me to pass over the cards? Yeah, you have to pass the cards over to me because I think... I know. I, yeah, you've got them. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Illuminati cards. Here we go. Whoa. Thank you. Got them. All right. Oops. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Did we leave off with you or me last time? And I ask this every time why I can't keep track of it. I don't remember. I think you go last, though. I think we. All right, you go first. We, we do five cards from each. That's it. And people have asked, why are you doing this? Because. The Illuminati game cards, a lot of people don't really know what they are. They've never heard of them or they have heard of them and they don't, they've never seen them. They've only seen them, you know, online advertised. They're very expensive for these packs. They're prophetic cards of doom. Yeah. They are. Really enough. They, they are. are. Well, they predict, they, they were made in the 90s for people that may be listening, journalists. The uh, They were made in the 90s and they are... Uh, it's weird because years and years, we're talking 20 something years later, they seem to have told a story of the future written by the Illuminati, which is fascinating. You know, and who is a, the Illuminati? I mean, we could find out the, the guys. Well, name I'm not, not going to name names. I'm just saying whoever built this deck, whoever had influenced Steve them, Jackson games. I mean, I don't know what that means. Is Well, that's just the guy that, that got the rights to the cards. Right, right. But I mean, there's, I mean, you got the Alex Jones card, the World Trade Center card. But mm -hmm. what's interesting to us what the reason why we are talking about this is because oh, yeah. there's two cards in the deck which you haven't even gotten to yet. Yeah. Which are one is the NASA card, which says that NASA completely fakes everything. They show it on a soundstage. And, and that other, was in cards that came out in the 90s. That was the card that came out in the 90s. But the oh, other crazy. one, it literally in here, out of the cards that are in here, one of the cards is called Flat Earth. And it's one of the few cards with a quote in it. And the quote says, people laugh, but the Flat Earthers know something. And it's interesting. So now we've, you know, we've got the, the combination. But we only do, we, we haven't gotten those cards. We only read 10 cards an episode. So do you want me to start? Yeah, I think you start. Okay. I'm going to try to hold the mic while I do this. Uh, the first card is called, wow, these are weird cards. This one's called Nuclear Power Companies. Nuclear Power, you'll have to tell me if that's where it is in focus. So your camera doesn't focus that well. What kind nope. of camera? What kind of CIA budget do you get over there? Nope, we don't. You got to spend your budget on clothes, and I spent mine on games. Yeah, true, true. All right, anyway, this nu nuclear power companies. What is that supposed to talk about? Wait, that's that supposed to talk about things like Japan? I mean, you, I mean, what do you think that was forecast? Well, that's a good. That's a good question. Uh, that's what I like to think about when I look at these cards. What were they trying to tell us? It doesn't really say. It doesn't. It doesn't really say. Just that that, that nuclear power companies are tied to some sort of evil thing. Uh, nephews of God. That just sounds like a weird movie title. I know. I don't. Th <laughs> I don't think it's been turned into a movie. Uh, third card is OPEC. Interesting. OPEC. None of these are really ringing a bell. I mean, we all no, know there's yet. been oil and gas, you know, issues and things sure. happening for a this, very this long time. The, the black cards, this one's called Power Corrupts. An absolute power corrupts. Corrupts, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and my last card, ooh, fitting. <laughs> and then one for next week is even more fitting. The, uh, the last card for this is also a black card. It's called 
privileged attack. Dun, dun, looks dun. like a skull vomiting. Weird. Is it vomiting? Something. Well, it's got some slime coming out of it, but yes. <laughs> privileged attack, so there you go. All right. What do you got? My five. My first one is called Exposed. Then it says REC. It looks like a guy in a courtroom talking to a lawyer, and it says requires media action. And I don't know what this means, because aren't the Illuminati cards an actual game? Well, yeah, you're, you're, this is the game. How do you play this game? Uh, it's do you ever, The thing is, you don't play games. So, right. you, again, you blow all your budget on clothes. <laughs> the, um, I just don't like games. I think they're boring. Well, did you, did you, cause, so you never played Pokemon, and you never played Magic the Gathering. No. This all started with Magic the Gathering no. way back when. I think I played Monopoly when I was growing up. Um, Clue, I loved Clue. I mean, I'm talking yeah. very little. Okay, yeah. no, we're not, we're not doing this anymore. No. Okay. All right, so <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the point is, I'm not going to go into it, but it's a card game. Look it up, how to play it. All anyone, right, all right. Anyone that's played Pokemon, you could play this. Of course, these are a lot more expensive. All right, my next card just says, Earthquake Disaster. Ooh, nice. So remember, was it a year ago or so, people were predicting a huge earthquake in California? I mean, I used to live there. Huge earthquakes were always predicted. And I was in California during the Loma Prieta. Well, uh, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to have to talk about the eclipse thing after this. Okay, the, yes. well, it's interesting that the eclipse path is going to go over the Madrid Fault. Yeah, cutting the, the United States in half and going over the Madrid Fault. Um, and conspiracy theorists not conspiracy realists like us. Conspiracy theorists are coming up with all sorts of doomsday predictions. My next card looks like this is doing some sort of hurricane tracking, and it says, early warning. Nice. So, we'll go. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe Katrina. And that's, pre, Katrina. that's pre-Katrina. Yeah, pre-Katrina. Made me think of that. Since. That's probably the Katrina card. Since nice. I was uh, there for that. Ooh, the next one epidemic with quarantine and then the red cross and then some kind of bottles of stuff and hazmat suits and a rubber glove and a needle and all crazy stuff excellent oh and last but not least maybe this was predictive programming but just for me the card says england on it hey see but there it should know. have a no sign over it <laughs> The fact is, England is tied to some sort of sinister force. Yeah, look at that. England, a cup of coffee, you know, that particular sort of Big ben. guy with the hat and the yep. brawly and Big Ben. So Like a bowler hat? Is that what that I think is? that's what it's called, yes. An umbrella? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me, he full looks... of aesthetic knowledge. That's excellent. That's a good one. All right, so All right. that's our uh, Illuminati game cards for this week. I'm going to need those back. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're so impatient. I'm putting them back. I I think I might have put some back in the wrong order. So uh, why? Out. Why? Why? Did, because I'm. Not, we talked about this in briefing. <laughs> I'm not good at games. They won't fit back in right. Well, no, it's because the lid. Yeah, yes. it's it's the lid. Faulty. You know, right, I'll take care go. of it. Just hand it over. All right, all right, all right, all right. It, you got it. it? it, it. Yep, I got. It. All right. All right. Number Luminati confirmed. All right. All right, uh, let's talk what about the eclipse. What else do we have? <laughs> oh, uh, the eclipse, yes. Are are they still there, by the way? Yes, they're still here. Okay, well, the, well, are the journalists, if, they, yet? If, they, if, they, if these guys haven't heard about it yet, the eclipse is a big deal for Flat Earth coming up. I didn't think it was, and I know we've got a couple weeks left. Uh, by the way, I may or may not, Are you? when are you going to Battle Creek? The 23rd or 24th of the month. Oh, so after the eclipse. Yes. Okay. We may have to do the show we do. I'm, I'm kind of, we should do this off air, but I'm going to tell you now just so I don't forget. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got an interview a week, not this next Wednesday, but the weekend, the week after that. So we have to do it early. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So the eclipse is coming on August 21st. It's going to be a really, really big deal. First, let's get the obvious out of the way. We have. We're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, Get that out of the way first. The, the eclipse is actually going to be a magnification of dark energy, which is going to start in Oregon and literally slice the United States in two, going from Oregon through Boise, Idaho, St. Louis, Nashville, Tennessee, and and in Charleston, South Carolina. The death toll will be massive, and we can no longer call ourselves the United States of America. But exactly. other than that, we'll be fine. The, the South will truly <laughs> secede from the Union. 
<laughs> exactly. not in a way that they were hoping. Right. No, no, no. It's going to be really cool. But we've got a flat earth billboard that is going to be dead smack in the middle of Spook Central, which is going to be in Salem, Oregon that morning. In fact, we activate the flat earth billboard there on August 18th. And it is going, you know, the and the eclipse happens on August 21st. It goes into full effect at about 10 a.m. Don't even bother trying to book anything in Salem right now. It is sold out. The entire city, there are no flights into Eugene or Salem. Every hotel is booked within 100 miles of that place. And if you, and, and the ones, I'm sorry, there are a few remaining on Priceline.com, but even the mid-range hotels are going for, I think, 500 a night. Mm -hmm. And that is because media has already, in fact, the, the governor has just declared, I think for the first time ever, a state of emergency in advance for August 21st for the entire state. Only because, because there'll be somebody that so many people there from other places. There's so many people there. And you can imagine that the uh, Interstate 5, the big Pacific Coast Highway, not to be confused with the old Pacific Coast Highway, but the big highway is you're going to have people that aren't don't know about the eclipse. And so they're driving uh, that morning and it's going to remember it's the, the commute. It's a, it's a normal day. If I'm not mistaken, it's on a what day is the 21st? It's true. People won't know. There are people who don't. Yeah, it's a, it's a Monday morning. People are going to be going to work and all of a sudden it's going to get dark. And as it gets darker and darker, people are going to slow down and the, the highway is just going to lock up. Not to mention there's going to be people just driving down there to, just, you know, there's going to be no point is stay off Interstate 5 right. if you can help it. It's going to be a parking lot, even though the eclipse is only going to last a few minutes. Now, that all, the, all that could be nixed or at least reduced if there was going to be bad weather in the forecast. So, you know, it's Oregon and I know it's the end of August, but it still could be cloudy. So if it's cloudy, then, you know, then the media has got to panic and they're going to like shift over to Boise. Everyone's going to drive rental cars to Boise as fast as they can that night if it's going to be cloudy. So it's going to be fascinating, though. This is a wonderful time to be alive. I know. All it's of really these cool. things are happening. And, okay, why is the Flat Earth care? The, the Flat Earth cares because it draws huge amounts of tension to one of our most prominent icons in the community, which is the moon. There's so many questions surrounding the moon and now and and mainstream science has a you saw the video that I put out recently where I where I grabbed that clip from the Washington Post and the Goddard the NASA Goddard guy which is the Washington Post we didn't even prompt them to do this they came out and they said hey why is the eclipse moving from west to east it shouldn't move west to east right you know because the moon goes you know, east to west so, so why is the eclipse going west to east and they tried to explain it. They had their best nerds on staff, couldn't do it. So they went to NASA and the guys, the NASA guy's explanation was completely wrong. He said, well, the moon is traveling twice as fast as the earth is rotating. You know, it's, it's going, it's moving twice as fast as the earth is rotating. He's like, no, 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 that's not true. Because even if you believe mainstream science, the earth, it, it takes 27.3 days, you know, little factoids that the flat earthers always know. 27.3 days for the Earth to get around the moon. That means the Earth has spun 27 plus times by the time it got around. And that was the explanation he went with. In fact, he, they put up a graphic on the screen to show that. And, it's like, it's, and people bought it. It's, it's, the, it's the George Orwell thing all over again, where it's like, oh, people believe science just because. They, they, even when they make mistakes, they, the people believe it. It's like, well, they wouldn't make a mistake as big as that. Oh, yes, they did. It was, it was huge. And that's just one of many, many things that is tied to the moon. <clears throat> well, it, flat earthers are always questioning the moon and uh, mainstream science claims they've already figured it out almost right. completely. But we ask questions about everything. Is it a sphere? Is it flat? Does it light itself? Does it have a cooling light? Is it, is it uh, the craters on the moon? How come they are all perfect? At 90 degree angles. And, yeah. And they're not at angles where they would be. Uh, they exactly. should be. So yeah, if, if you're, you're absolutely right. If the if the moon craters look like they're perfectly created from 90 degree impacts, but in a perfect universe, or I should say perfectly imperfect, you're going to have skids all over the place coming from all sorts of different angles and trajectories. So why don't we see any of those craters? Why don't we have these ugly scrapes where they glance off? It takes a big divot out of it and keeps going. Why is that? What? What? Why does that never happen? And of course, the weird coincidences. The three big ones: one, that the 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 moon is four hundred times more narrow than the sun, but it is also four hundred times closer than the sun. So it fits perfectly in front of it, which is the the eclipse thing. Is wow, that's a coincidence. 
Yeah, okay. How about the moon? The fact that we only see one side of it. Right. Exactly one side. That's even more, that's even a, a, a weirder thing where the moon is perfectly locked in. And most Americans don't know this. Of course, Americans don't know their history anyway. But... Is that your motorcycle ride coming to pick you up? <laughs> That's not my ride. <laughs> okay. That's a biker bar. I'm meeting those guys later. <laughs> okay. The, uh, the, uh, the moon uh, rotates perfectly in alignment with the Earth. I mean, it doesn't go out of phase even a half a degree in a month. We've literally only seen the same side of the moon for as long as we've recorded the, the, the moon phases. It, it's only been that way. Do you know how unlikely that is? Oh, on top of that, the moon... The moon's size, if you believe, again, mainstream science, doesn't match up. It's 2,000 miles wide, which is proportionally way bigger than any other moon in the solar system, if you believe mainstream science. There's just too many weird things about the moon. And so this eclipse helps us because people are going to be researching this and they're going to be going, you know, they're, they're going to find us because of it. And Oh, the billboard is so perfect. Yeah, perfect Because the media is going to have nothing to do. And, they're gonna, and the billboard will be there three days before this thing happens, the media will be there at least 24 to 36 hours before it happens. They're going to be talking to people and they will gravitate on that billboard. I guarantee it. Gravitate is the word that you would use, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Even though the gravity moon is, is uh, smaller better. than they tell us and closer than they tell us and most likely about the same size as the sun. Absolutely. Research flat earth. Hashtag research flat earth. <laughs> and, and also the moon has this special property that when uh, NASA, uh, the lunar uh, module lands on it, no dust ever comes up and, right. and touches oh, the bottom of it. I'm sorry. Don't get me started <laughs> on the Apollo mission. I mean, the, the, uh, here's one that I, know, I rarely talk to people about, and that is with the, the feats of strength that never, ever happen. And that is, if you believe mainstream science, the gravity on the moon is one sixth, right? So if you're, we'll, we'll throw this out there in the chat room. So if you weigh 180 pounds normally on earth, you weigh 30 pounds on the moon. Do you know what your vertical jump should be on the moon? Yeah, you one know, guy are, could have picked another guy up with one hand. Well, th exactly. That's, that's my point. Just to show that us, just to lunar, film it and say, look at this. Rover, the lunar yeah. rover, you wouldn't need a, a, a pulley system to get that thing down. You just grab it and put it down. Two guys should be able to lift it very easy, even with those heavy batteries. Why didn't they even lift the rover? You know, the feats of strength were never there. There shouldn't have been any heavy breathing at all, not to mention the slow motion things. Uh, fine, you want to say that, that uh, the legs are moving in slow motion? Fine. Why are their arms moving in slow motion? If everything is weighing you know, one-sixth its weight, you can. You, they should be moving in hyperspeed. Okay, let me throw one more out at you. The, one other, last but not least about the moon, one little fun fact about the moon, and that is the temperature. The, the moon temperature, which we, there's plenty of videos on, and that is the moon is a cooling light. Yeah, and that I, is, I don't want to say 100% on that because some people have found results to not line up with that. So Well, I'm not one of them. I, I, know, I know you did the test. I did the test myself, and I trust you know guys like Jeffrey Grupp and Insanity is Sanity, mm -hmm. where they use copper strips, and their tests, you know, full real-time video, and it looked great to me, right, which was... Right. Uh, that the moonlight is a cooling, refrigerating light. No, very similar to the cooling lasers, which we can do now. Which means, if it's again for those of you guys who need a refresher course, if it's 90 degrees in the sun, it's 80 degrees in the shade. We already know that. But if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moonshade, which is warmer. And of course, the one that I will still take credit for, which is what happens when you magnify moonlight. Does it get warmer or does it get colder? And it actually gets colder than the the moonlight itself. It's we could have refrigerators running off moonlight somehow if we wanted. I, if if you could rig up a system complex enough to do it, yeah. What do they call could. those things? Rube Goldberg devices, where you have one does, thing leads to another. Does the cooling does the cooling light prove a flat Earth? No, it does no. not. But does it? I mean, does 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 NASA faking the moon mission prove a flat Earth? No, it doesn't. No. But it creates a completely, but the moonlight com, uh, creates a completely different relationship between the sun and the moon. Because if the moon is reflecting the sunlight, then we should get some sort of residual rela uh, um, radiation relationship. But we're getting, or at the very least, neutral. It should be, you know, the same temperature, you know, in both places. But that's not what we see. Flat Earth is death by a thousand cuts, or Absolutely the preponderance of evidence. That's how we're getting this job done. Yeah. And again, if you throw me stuff, for everything that the globe throws at us, we throw them five. 
which is why we have such a hard time getting an academic to, to challenge us. The, uh, the Flat Earth meetup that's happening in Denver, rumor has it, and I believe it, that uh, the, uh, for the Denver Post, there was a, a writer out of the Air Force Academy. He was, I'm sorry, not a writer, a physics professor at the uh, Air Force Academy who is thinking about going to the meetup and trying to throw it out. Yeah, but they haven't scheduled the date yet. Ooh, interesting. I know. You know, something you mentioned earlier when you were talking about the moonlight and how it's a cooling light, you said it's a refrigerate, refri refrigerative light. Right. Um, and that sounds like refrigeration. That sounds like food preservation. But I, I know what you meant. You just meant cold. But uh, they do say that the light of the moon is a putrefying light. I've heard that myself. Yeah. Food. So I just wanted to make sure that people understood that you didn't mean the light of the moon and, will refrigerate. And I made the joke about we could cool the yeah but and again we're not we're not bashing i'm not bashing science when i when i try to go after you know these things and and people say well you know you, if you're doing the flat earth thing you're completely anti-science you know me i look uh, light bulbs very illuminating air conditioning super cool microwave ovens i don't really have an opinion on microwave ovens but the point is i use all these things when it comes to uh, the the things that they put out there, we take them for granted. Uh, the, again, the George Orwell quote, where he said that science has a responsibility. They've got, and people just take everything they say at face value, and we never question it. Why would we? Why would we, why would we question NASA ever in a million years? Why? I mean, you're in Houston. They wear white uniforms. They don't carry guns. They smile for the camera. They're totally legit, right? They're heroes. That's what we've been taught They're since heroes. we were children. But at the same time, look, they were founded on the still burning embers of the Nazi war machine. They are uniquely military. Don't right. think for a second that these guys wouldn't pull the same stuff that the other military groups would. And that doesn't mean that the people who live in Houston and work for NASA, who uh, who who build things and put the they think anyway, they're building things that go uh, on the ISS are bad people doing nefarious things that they know they're lying. No, compartmentalization creates a situation where they are building that part that goes on a rocket or whatever, but uh, it goes up into the air and comes down in the ocean and doesn't go where they think it goes. So Absolutely. It's a look really up, hard yeah, thing up, to tell somebody up, that who works look for up the, the Remember when I had that phone call with that group out in California, Interorbital? One of mm -hmm. SpaceX's rival. As a matter of fact, why have we heard much? Remember the um, what was it the Google X Space Challenge? We're in the we're in the second right. half of that thing. Remember the five groups that were supposed to land a probe yes. on the moon this year? Yes. Win twenty million dollars. And the when when I talked to Inner Orbital, they're you know when I asked them, I go, doesn't NASA have to track everything that you're putting up in the sky? And they go, no, NASA doesn't. But there's another organization that does, and that's ATS, the Atmospheric and Tra Transportation Safety Bureau. And he goes, and every space agency has their own version of this. You have to let these guys know months and months and months in advance every single detail about your rocket. I'm going, how convenient, you know, that you would do that. So. Well, what about the Mad Mike rocket? If that thing goes off, uh, are they going to be allowing the powers that should not be know that that thing's going to be going up well, in the atmosphere? I, I, or is that going to be on the slide because they'd stop it? Well, no, no, no. I mean, the rocket that he's doing, in fact, the latest news I had heard that he was going to do that on the 15th. Yes, it's been pushed back a little bit. To the 15th. Well, I mean, it's close to the eclipse, I suppose. But I don't know any details about the rocket. I don't know how you high it's are. supposed to go. Is he is he jumping something or is he just going up? This isn't think, the one uh, where Snake he... River Canyon, last I heard. <laughs> was it going to be the Snake River Cabin? I mean, no. that you don't have to, you don't have to do Pretend. anything there. Right, right. Yeah, you don't have to do anything there. But well, anyway, we'll the, find out. The, the point is the eclipse, we're going to be focusing on this and everyone it will do nothing but help us as, as the media ramps up to this real quick. You know, as we get closer and closer to it, the media is going to hype this thing to no end and the related searches are going to be tied to us. So we win on, on, on this. Flat Earth always wins. Truth always wins. Let me go into the live chat and say hello, and then maybe we've got emails, then maybe we've got some other things to talk about, and there's been a lot of flat earth in the news as of late. Anyway, I want to say hi to Dee Marble and Carolyn Gutman Day, and uh, we've got uh, Randy Cochran here, and uh, Femex Art, or Femex AM. One of my contacts is not focusing today, so excuse me if I read your name incorrectly, Nathan Oak lawn oh no it's nathan oakley <laughs> joking 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 uh knowledge scavenger paula is here alex aquarius as well who earlier in chat said 
acid never again. And I saw that comment and didn't know what it was related to, but I thought it was funny. The only way is Yeshua is here, who says, I'm vegan to reduce the chance of parasites. Oh, that's actually a pretty good reason. Uh, let's see, we've got Hula for the Grim Reaper, one of the most interesting YouTube channel names I've ever heard, saying hello to Uktina Walker and Zulu One. And um, let's see, let's got, we've got CC here, Ute Hube, The Universe QS, X Stranger XX, Bindo Bucks. Bindo says rockets fly beyond Antarctica and crash there. Possible. AJ's 1844 is here as well. Mitz Patrick Fitzsimmons and uh, Arwen as well, who says NASA, they're visual trickery experts, calculus doctrine creators and magician trickery actors. Ginger Sugarbush is joining us as well. And Dave Hinkle too. There's Alex Aquarius who says, I'm going to interview my father who worked at NASA 39 years ago in Houston. That is will be very interesting, Alex. Hopefully your father won't get angry at you during the interview. Well, you know, most most NASA people, you remember I lived next to my next door neighbor was Wayne Ottinger, the NASA garage mechanic. The, you know, the guy was career NASA, knew all the astronauts on a first name basis, had phone calls come in all the time from the ones that were still alive. Walls were bristling with plaques and awards and lifetime achievement things. He's written books on the subject. He knew nothing about nothing because 99% of NASA employees, the wrench turners, you don't have to tell anybody. The only people that have to be in on it are the telemetry guys. That's it. It's all the, the lower end guys you need. And of course, the super high brass, but the, it's, it's the Capricorn one thing all over again. All you need is the nerds that handle the data. That's all you need. The, once, once you control the, the trajectory data, that's all. The rest is easy. Sorry. We've got um, Epsom Vince saying the sun is not a burning mass of hydrogen. All right, all right. Mr. Anderson is here saying greetings to all. Um, and uh, Marilyn Wise V is here saying hi, Patricia. And uh, Flat Earth Freedom with uh, Lisa, Je Prefer Flat, is here saying hello to all. And I hope I've managed to say hello to all awakened mind too is here i don't know if i mentioned timaeus and Dina walker i don't know why i wouldn't have and zulu one and uh, michelle martin and um yeah uh steve watson too and christopher and if i continue then i will just be probably boring everybody and wow, that's weird how one of my contacts is kind of a bit misty today so that's all right do you want me to no uh... reading for me because i might get it slightly wrong uh um... Yeah, what's going on? Oh, uh, well, I was going to mention the Kyrie Irving thing. Yes, again, please quick, do. Because Kyrie Irving, as you know, it, it was it was again a, a perfect timing for him. He because LeBron James wanted to be traded from the Cleveland Cavaliers because every superstar wants to win a title every year, and he didn't have faith in Cavaliers to win a title next year, even though they'd probably make it to the finals. Because of that. His second, which would be Kyrie Irving, wanted to be traded. And shortly after that, a science teacher, and this story was initially picked up by NPR, which, which was great. A science teacher in a middle school was trying to teach kids some basic science. And the kids pushed back for the first time in his career. And the, the, the reasoning for the pushback was they said, well, Kyrie Irving told us that the world was flat. So that's a major sports star, won a, won a title, seems really successful, and he's not even 30 yet. So who are you to, to challenge Kyrie Irving? And the teacher you know, wrote about this, and then all of a sudden it was picked up by Rolling Stone and the Washington Post and CBS Sports and every sports outlet there was. And they, they, quite a few people were saying, well, if it happened here, you know, there's probably quite a few schools all over the country because you know, Kyrie Irving has millions of followers in both Twitter and Facebook and all these places. And, and his opinion is valued, which is why he got so much crap at the All-Star game when that one reporter, I think he was from USA Today, came to him and said, look, you have a responsibility not to talk nonsense. And he's like, hey, look, I'm speaking my mind. You know, kind of like you got you to gotta toe the line. But anyway, that picked up a lot of news recently because of, uh, and I'm really surprised I was waiting for it and here we are Wednesday and it hasn't happened yet. Because that was last, what, Friday? It was right, last Friday right. when that happened. 
I was expecting the science community to address this again, like drag, you know, drag Bill Nye out of mothballs or get Neil deGrasse Tyson away from his wine or whatever it is and start talking to these, you know, you'd think the academic community would want to push back or the education system would want to push back. Haven't seen it. Have not seen it yet. Don't know why they're letting it go, but I'm encouraged. What do you think Helps the reason us. is? Yeah, it is encouraging actually. I don't, I don't yeah. know. There's, there's, it's, you know, if I, when you look at chess moves on the board, I'm looking, I'm going, well, they're maybe you, pushing back to give us a false feeling of security to maybe. bring in the alien invasion. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the eclipse coming up, who knows what, yeah. what's going to happen there. I mean, it's, it is really, let's put, let me, let me dwell on the eclipse one more for one more minute. What's interesting about this eclipse is that it is never, it has not happened in modern times in the United States ever. The last time this happened was you know, around World War I. We what had radio if we were in fact we didn't even have radio back then you know the, the we didn't have planes for the most part yeah the Wright I brothers did their th somebody talking about the eclipse on radio and how hard that would be but back then people would gather around the radio weirdly enough and but I mean stare at it to get their news and entertainment photography wasn't very good right, it, right. it was very very limited and this is this is in the way the the way it's cutting across the United States is perfectly cutting across the United States. If it was a little higher, if it started in Washington, it would end in North Carolina. If it starts any lower, then you miss the entire Northeast. I mean, it's the, it's the literally, it's, you, it's the United States only. Everybody in the United States gets to see it. I don't care if you're in New York, Los Angeles, Florida, Seattle, everyone gets to see it in some form or another. And it, uh, it's just, I don't know, when you're looking at it, it looks very, very unusual, the timing of it. It it's does. Really cool. Plus it's cool. but how could they, I mean, you know, okay, how do they know when an eclipse is actually coming? Because they've kept track of it in the past. NASA's right. always wrong about what's going to happen during an eclipse. Well, so, again, most of the time, up until now, they've always just been glancing blows. It's like, oh, the southeast corner of Mexico or a little part of South America, and people have to fly all over the place to get it. This is the only time I have, anyone's ever remembered, it, well, again, 100 years that we the there's literally no way to miss it unless the entire country is covered by clouds during the back part of summer there's no way to miss this plus you've got planes i mean think of the people that are accidentally uh flying that have no idea they're flying from like sure. portland to nashville that day you know and they're all be flying and you know, the pilots can be like, and on your right side the eclipse <laughs> <What>? <laughs> They will have no idea that's <laughs> happening. And and so the uh, people that are flying that made these flights a long time ago, they're going to have a great seat. Because when you're flying from, uh, uh, because it's going west to east, if you're flying from, say, Portland, Nashville, it's going to be in slow motion. It's not going to be like, like everyone on the ground sees. It's going to be a really, really super slow eclipse. You're chasing it, as it were. Anyway, sorry. I do want to mention that on Thursday, which is tomorrow, the 3rd of August, 2017, my guest is going to be Paul on the plane. Speaking of planes, but we're talking about the plane, the flat earth. And he does a lot of work with his P900 camera. And uh, he's got a bunch of interesting videos out. If you've not subscribed to Paul on the plane, please do. He, uh, in a recent video, it's part two in a series where he did uh, analysis of pictures from the epic camera on board, supposedly, the DSCOVR, the Discover satellite. Um, and uh, they found something else uh, when they were looking at images. And it isn't the Earth and it isn't our moon. What is it? Go check out Paul in the Plains video, uh, episode five, Discover Image Analysis. It's part two. So that's on his channel as of the date that I just mentioned. So he's coming on Thursday on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, the 3rd cool. of August. That's awesome. So did let's you see. For that one? Mm, yes, indeed. You did. Right. Did you, which one did you pick? Are you going to tell me? Uh, the Lady in Red. Lady in Red. Mm -hmm. okay. Mark sometimes makes thumbnails for me that's the little picture that goes on the video that you can see when you click yeah, on you it diminish it like that mark makes that he little sometimes makes that, that little, little graphic thing whatever <laughs> well i make a bunch of them too um i just got a message from flat max uk who says hi patricia mark Sargent kindly mirrored my last video and mentioned me on your show thank you both so flat max uk just wanting to thank you through me well, it right. looks like uh, our photographer, Mark and Carrie, the journalist from New York, now a Houston resident, 
are, are splitting. You're heading on out. Yep. So when do you think that the article, did I already ask that? When might the article come out? Oh, I have no idea because I have to, I have to interview some other people for it too. Okay. Like I talked about with you. Right, before. right. So, I mean, within the next month or two. All right. You'll let me know, right? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Be in touch. If there's anything I can do to help you, you know yeah. how to contact me. Yeah. Of One of us. <laughs> One of okay, us. Bye, both of you future flat earthers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming by. This is not like <laughs> Oh, weird. <laughs> she said, I don't know if you could pick that up. This is not the first time she's done an interview and had a one of us chant. So, oh. <laughs> bye. They're very nice. Yeah, but I've been here this whole words. time since we started taking photos. And they're going to use just one photo, but I guess it's like anything. You need to take. No, no, the internet version will probably use multiple. Remember, like the, the Denver Post used six. I hope they don't use photos with us doing something stupid like. <laughs> no, they'll probably use this. <laughs> probably. She did uh she did focus on the uh, Illuminati cards when we were talking Illuminati about them. <laughs> anyway. Um uh, Ginger Sugarbush has asked me to give a cat update. I know there's some people out there who think that all I care about is fashion and cats. That's not true. Uh but I am going to give you a cat update. At one point one of my cats Flynn hurt his paw. He had to have a little operation on his paw, but he's totally fine now. He fell off a very high portion of my house and wasn't able to right himself in time and caught his paw in some weird way. I didn't see it happen, but he was limping. So he's okay now. He hurt the pad. The paw. Anyway, he's going to be fine. And then I've got Rory, who's the real friendly orange one, and Greer, the black cat. And uh, they're all wonderful. So that's my cat update. They were not in here during the show because strangers, they're a little iffy with. But now that... Uh, Carrie and Mark have left. Rory has just started walking on in. So nice to see them back. Nice. I'm just kind of scanning through chat, which I don't normally do, but I what's going out on in chat? It. Tell me what's up. Uh Ukdina thinks that you may be naked. No, I'm wearing a shirt. She's wearing a shirt, but her, her hair is covering up the straps. Okay, look, there's no straps. It's like this. Look. See? Ta -da. Yeah. Normal clothes you do not own. <laughs> Normal clothes here. <laughs> How did it go? I'm not naked. It it it's uh, it doesn't yeah. It's not showing cleavage or anything like that though. With clothes, without clothes. Exactly. With without. Nobody would ever believe I would be a nudist. No, because it's not fashionable. <laughs> Because it's it well, no, I, and people have said that before, because how how can you accessorize? Exactly. Funny. You nice. know what? I've never been to a nudist uh, beach or anything. Have you? I was invited to take people when I was doing when I was down in uh, the Virgin Islands when mm -hmm. I was young. I was they wanted me to be a deck ape on a boat, a sailboat that would take people to and from this island that was sort of a nudist island. Oh, how old were you then? I was thirteen. So and you said so, yes, and I'll do it for free. In fact, I'll pay you. <laughs> yes, and my uh, my family was. I, I got my, my my grandparents didn't didn't think it was great a uh, great idea at first, and then they're like, ah, you know, this might work. And then they thought, no, my mom would probably kill kill them for leaving me there. So, but it was a sincere offer. He was absolutely wanting me to do it, uh, but no, I never never did those that. those moments of things, the road not taken. You so, could be a whole different man now due to that. Can, can I bring up the eclipse one more time? Because I, I completely forgot about this. Did I, I told you, but I don't think I told them. Yes. Them, them. all you people. One of us. <laughs> one of us. <laughs> Join us. The, the, the documentary team that's been, in, that's been doing this thing so far, they're coming back up to the Northwest just for the eclipse. And they are taking me down to it. And I'm letting people know that in advance because at the very least, they've got me scheduled to be in Portland. Because all you have to do is be south of Portland to see the whole thing. Because even in the northwest up near Seattle, you're at 92, 93 percent. But if you go south of Portland, you're at 100 percent. So I may or may not be at the Salem billboard for the eclipse. I don't know. Honestly... It's going to be such a zoo. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get anywhere near it. Right. But we may, if we're lucky, may, we might go down there the day before and shoot it. I'll give you guys more details as as it comes. But I will be down in that area. But I'll, I'll talk to D Marvel about it when I meet him 
on Tuesday. I want to go. I'm jealous. What, to the eclipse? Yeah, I want to go meet Dean Marble and everybody. Well, uh, well, no. Well, you know. When is it again? What, my, the meetup? Yeah. It's Tuesday. Oh. Seriously? You're going to fly in and to see it? Know. Maybe. Oh. It's Tuesday. Why don't I plan these things out better? Well, no, just he just announced it. Yeah, I know. I saw it. I saw the video. I think I shared so, it already. And told, and told me on the... Did you hear him on the air when he was telling it? Uh, it was priceless. He goes... It, and he goes, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be Tuesday. I go, really? Tuesday? I go, what time? He goes, seven. I go, the same time you're calling me now. Same time I do my show. <laughs> it's going, he goes, damn. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's right. I'll go anyway. Screw it. Why Did not? you watch the new Marty Leeds video called A Not-So-Funny yes, Comedy About Internet it. Drama? I watched it just before I came on. And it was a good point. It what didn't I mean, yeah, he had one little flat earth thing at the end there, which I which I love. That's the reason why I thumbed it up. Because it was going because a little shot at Jaronism. How he tied Jaron into all that was was nice. But it's true. I mean, look at look at the drama. You think Flat Earth has drama. The conspiracy world in general has huge amounts of drama. And he, the chain that he put together was dizzying to follow. It's all aspects of the internet. Right. You go to any community on YouTube and you'll find drama. It's, it's crazy, actually. Well, can we not just get along? Guess hey, what? No, we can't. And that's okay, I guess. We're not I maybe agree. meant Real to. Real quick, um, and good, I'm right reading chat. So the chat, so the billboard is going to go live on the 14th now. Mm -hmm. So Carolyn Gutman Day says that it's going live on the 14th, not the 18th. We had to change it. We got the last freaking slot available. Now, I imagine 14th, it's still going. I don't know how long you guys have it for, but I imagine the 14th, it's going for, what, a month, probably. So you're still good. Well, 14th is better. 14th is earlier than, better than the 18th. Fantastic. Uh, D. Marble says, I didn't book it, man. <laughs> didn't book? I, yeah, I know you didn't. <laughs> I, I know you didn't. But it, but it was great. No, it was great that he was calling with all the enthusiasm. <laughs> and he's like, it's like realizing as of time, he's like, really, really, Tuesday, really. Some people are talking about ripping their clothes off in chat. I don't know what's going on with you people in here. Weird. Billboard will be live August 14th sep through September. Oh, through September 10th, 24-7. Is it digital? Carolyn nice, says nice she signed the contract and yesterday and paid in full live for one month. That's fantastic. Do you, is Annie. it you who started saying fantastic or me? Because I've noticed that we both say it. Who's the originator? I don't. Well, Matt Boyland, obviously. He says fantastic a lot? No, he well, says he's, he's, he's the originator. The originator. <laughs> <laughs> That's your best joke yet. Sorry. I, it's too easy. <laughs> I watched that whole thing. Who invented the cell phone? Well, we all know. Who invented the microphone? Yeah, that's the running joke. You guys want a running joke? That it is. That anyone ever says who invented something, just say Math Powerland. Right. It's good. And people say, who the hell is Math Powerland? <laughs> I know. Well, you know. Remember, people do know. It's like, come on. He's, 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 he's I, I, not to take a shot, but come on. You can't, you can't go down that road to say that you invented Flat Earth kid um flat earth was invented by the creators yeah, the creator you can't, god you can't go down that road whenever you want to whatever you want to call it uh, whatever people, say, people wonder why i don't come up with a i'm trying to speak to everyone and everyone's got a different view on that so that's why you know I, people i'm saying it people will still say you know until the bitter end it's like he is entertaining he is entertaining like a Car crash from hell. Very slow motion car <laughs> crash with fire. Uh, with the gas tanks exploding in slow motion and nice. flipping in midair. Well, and maybe now he's going to attack you after he has been no, by somebody. No, that you're why, why, to. why would he? Or me. Why, why, why would he? He's, he's, he's too distracted. I mean, for, for God's sakes, the, uh, the father of flat earth thing has been around now for, what, three weeks at least? Mm -hmm. When did that Denver Post article come out? And he's really still wondering he hasn't seen why it. Jake is the leader of Flat Earth now. That, it's like it's invisible to him. I don't know why. It's mm -hmm. it's really, really weird. I'm really surprised he hasn't take the sh taken the shot. Chris Topher says, F.E. is created by the creator. There you go. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. 
Uh, anywho, uh, what else? Uh, Anything? Fun? Wesley stays flat if news talk says wow and they're not even drinking. <laughs> True. What? What? Sometimes we just we have we have fun on this show, believe it or not. We're not doing this necessarily because anybody's making us. We're making us. We're doing this because it's <laughs> we, fun we love and informative and um plus of course the agency made us do it, but that's on the down low. Um it's nay on the uh Chris Topher says he's not naked. He has his socks on, so yeah. Good to know. Uh, hello to Helioskeptic as well, and Daniel Reza and Wizlaws. And uh, did I say hi to Martin Leakey earlier? If I didn't, oh, Elspeth Awake. Hey, how are you? Master Bev is here. Uh, and a couple other people who have joined Jonathan Doherty. Hi, how are you? I appreciate everyone being here. I, I, let me let me jump in on chat because I rarely get a chance to do this. Mm. Uh, uh, Artist Liberalis says, I think Math Powerline is the Andy Kaufman of the Flat Earth community. That's yes, a good point. But the difference was is that Andy was actually punking, whereas Matt is not. This is true. Matt is absolutely serious about what's going on. Well, maybe it all is one giant punk on us. And no. And we'll reveal no, it eventually. I, his dialogue has not changed since the beginning. He is, that is him through and through. Well, you know what? In a way, I guess it's good to be consistent, to be true yeah. to who you are. Yeah. Hey, embrace it. Mm. <laughs> embrace got... being the demigod. Ian Kane McGregor says, what's up, Love Cats? A little cure reference there for the song Love Cats. I like that. Flat Earth Math is here, who says he's petting a non-CGI kitty. Oh, that's nice. Oh. That's just so nice. Um, Donald Putman is saying Fepe. Yep, yep, yep. Fepe and cats go together just like that. And potatoes. I'm, I'm going to bring some uh, uh, some of the foam globes to the meetup on Tuesday so people can throw them, crush at them each other. Whatever. And I'm encouraging people, the reason I'm bringing them is not only are they good little displays so you can torture people with them because it's a toy. That's all it is is a toy. But uh, make your own videos and see how you can destroy this thing. I, I don't just do the obvious thing and feed it to your dog or throw it for your cat or so. Oh, those are pretty good. Do, how would you destroy this? And uh, make it. Oh, that would be a perfect use of the microwave oven. Yeah. Make videos on it. I don't know what a microwave to, would do to this. It's just a cheap Chinese piece of crap. Not po poking fun of the Chinese, but they do make some pieces of crap. But uh, these things you, you melt it and make it flat. Oh, that would be interesting to watch, although it might create some kind of toxic stuff in your house. Maybe. I don't know. But I'm gonna I'm gonna be handing some of these out at the uh, first ones that show up at the restaurant. I don't know how many I've got. Maybe twenty, maybe less. Here's some interesting comments. Um, um, Timaeus is saying Math Powerland is like one of those actors that always plays themselves. Oh, that's a good point. Good point indeed. Um, Leslie Beckwith says, "I thought we had an eclipse in the '70s." Yeah. No, there's been eclipses all over the place. There's always but eclipses. It, but in the United States, this is the first one of its type. It, from this from like a hundred plus years or something, right? Yeah, yeah. This is not a glancing blow. This is literally the first time that it's come, that it's going straight across the United States, literally, and, and the United States only, which is fascinating. You know, it's, it, think of the odds, you know, of, of how an eclipse is going to hit something. And because remember, the, the, regardless of whether it's flat or it's round, the world is still 75% water. The surface area. So How most do we know that, by the way? How do we really know that? Okay. If it's mainstream science, at the very least, it's 75% water. Right, right. Which means that at 75% of all uh, anything goes across the water. So the fact that this is go this is the perfect shot across the United States, it's, it's going to be fantastic. Ooh, see what I did there? You said fantastic. I did say fantastic. <laughs> Uh, Alex Aquarius says that uh, Math Powerland is the Kathy Griffin of Flat Earth. But, well, uh, well, because no. he hasn't done anything really controversial. He hasn't? No. I mean, he hasn't tried to, like, done a, a, a fake severed head of Eric or Jaron or anybody like that. I think he did a fake severed head of Jake. Did he? No. Well, no. He well, actually, well, I mean, yeah, when he was doing the impersonation of Jake, that probably wasn't great. Right, right. But um, it wasn't. Well, James Hicks Boson has a point. Um, it doesn't relate to me, but it may relate to many watching, that it was thanks to Math Powerland that this flat earth is even being discussed. Most people would never look into anything by themselves. Hey, you know what? I'm, 
as much as I'd like to agree completely with you, listen to any of my interviews, and the very first video that I ran across was not Matt's. Mine was neither. It was that German guy that was talking about flight paths. Yes, I did run into Matt's eventually, but it wasn't the very first video I, I ran into. I had to be told by somebody on Facebook, who, I was already posting flat earth stuff on my Facebook and on my very early Twitter, but I wasn't, I didn't have a channel or anything. Um, I was told by somebody you should look into uh, Matt and Matt Boylan, I think they said, I can't even remember. And I did look and I thought he was a comedian and didn't understand what he was talking about, but I already was a flat earther. Right. And, and even when I did the uh, the clues, right? Remember, yeah, I quoted Matt Boylan in, in, in the Flat Earth Clues, all rights reserved, in in the one of the first ones I did, but oh, I also quoted Max Malone it, right, right away as well. I gave credit to everyone I could, gave crow to, uh, credit to Crow777. Mm -hmm. Anybody, anybody's work, anybody's work is like, look, these guys do, you know, do some good stuff. But I still got more, no offense to Matt, but I got more out of Max Malone's insights than I did most people. Mm -hmm. You know, because he was the guy that found the miss the gaps. Uh, Udina Walker says that Mark Sargent opened her mind to Flat Earth. Martin Leakey says, Mark Sargent, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna blame you too. I'm no, blame no, you. no. It, uh, yes, I I I am I am Why sorry. Why did you do this people, to us? <laughs> I pe I'm sorry that people decided to use me for some sort of ASMR thing and put on their headphones and go to sleep with me talking about flat earth. Honestly, I think there's probably better things you could listen to, but I'm flattered. That's that's fantastic. Nathan Oakley says, that's Matt Powerland is Eric Dubay. Same person. You don't have to like it. <laughs> I you know, in Eric some Aladdin. way, they both, they both have created situations, let's just say. Yeah. And they both hate me, so maybe they are the same person. Well, who doesn't hate you? I know. Out of these 250-something people, probably half of them hate you. I know they do, but still, yet still they watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it, it could be worse. It could be Snooky. Yeah, this is true. Uh, Five Arts Liberalis, want to say hello as well. And um, USA Today, according to Eartha Plain, uh, NASA is hiring a planetary protection officer. Yeah, Just according I saw, to USA I saw Today. that piece of crap. What is that all about? Oh, it's just that more. Like that's Star that's Wars more, weaponry that, to make us think that, that yeah. Is it remember what I said? Any space story yes. is mm -hmm. just a drumbeat to reinforce the globe. That's all it is. In fact, the story I liked more than that, because I get vapor lock. Hang on, I got to drink some Tang, endorsed by astronauts. You're really drinking Tang. I mean, you know, I like having you around as a very, very close personal friend. You drink that, you're not going to be around. It's Tang. The astronauts yeah. drink it. It can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, the um, a story that I liked was the hoax that Facebook was going to ban all yeah. flat earth groups. And Zuckerberg was the one at fault. Yeah, and it was a yeah. terribly written article. It was so over the top. Uh, it wasn't so wrong that it became right again, but it was awful. And so everyone immediately knew it was a hoax. And it didn't get much, much traction, but it was interesting. And again, put Flat Earth in, into the news once I again. I got lots of messages on Facebook about it. People were telling me about it. So and I said, it's a hoax, it's a hoax, it's a hoax. Carolyn Gutman says, when is the Seattle meetup? It's next Tuesday. Right, right. This coming Tuesday in Seattle. Uh, there's a trailer on D Marble's channel. There's a trailer on my channel. And it happens hey. to be the same trailer. James Hicks Boson says photo or painting was his first eye opener. He's prettier than me. You know, the thing about <laughs> D Marvel, um, photo yeah. or painting, is that when he was in the comedy club? That was, yes. That was his big... I must have only watched part of the comedy club thing. It, he, was, he did it in various things. And, and the photo or painting, look, I'm not knocking. Photo or painting, great. Wonderful. Yeah, it's a good tool. The problem is, is what you just said, is that it, it's a good tool, but it was only one tool. And that is, if you say photo or painting to somebody 50 times and they don't get it, they're not going to get it the next 50 times. You've and got also people to, are wrong all the time. And then you say, how do you know? And yeah. then you're like, well, I don't. You, and then they walk gotta, around. There's got, you, there's got to be more tools in the toolbox, right. but which is good. why the Flat Earth Clues worked because it hit people from multiple angles. You couldn't defend against all of it. Yeah. And so some of it was going to get through, 
Whereas photo or painting, solid as it was, was only one, I know he's going to torture me for saying this, it was one dimensional. It, it was like, it's like, look, okay, photo painting, what else is there? What else, what else you got to convince somebody? And he didn't at the time. He rested on his laurels. And I'm not saying that to be mean. It is bad when anybody does some, something when you rest on your laurels. You have to always keep it fresh, always. So, well, you try. You do what you can. And, you know, when you run out of ideas, you run out of ideas. I want to say hi to Pute from Sweden, P-U-T-T-E. I don't know how you pronounce that, but Pute, that's how I would say it, from Sweden. Just want to say hi. It's one of those names I read and I know who it is, but when I'm pronouncing it, I know I'm getting it completely wrong. So um, Ranger Text is here as well. Any um, questions from the chat room since I'm actually reading it this time mm, with my extremely high power glasses? Yeah. By the way, there's something in your eye, I noticed. Is there? Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe. You're okay now. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. The, uh, and I, again, it, that is not a ripoff of Ghostbusters 2. They stole that from me. Uh, Ian Kane McGregor says, clues, proofs, and Matt's first few videos did it for him. I can't, um, Matt's, my big thing was that the story, get, again, I can tell it better than he can, and I'm not going to tell it, was him sitting on the couch, coherent, calm, somewhat relaxed, laying it out, laying out the story. Mm -hmm. What happened to that guy? And that's that's going to be the question. As this thing gets bigger and bigger, that'll be the question. What happened to that guy? Well, that same guy is the one who did videos on Axe body spray, so... Do we really want to know what happened to that guy? Bye. I think that guy's the guy I, we've I, got today. It's the same guy. You, look, you find out what works and you run with it. Oh, and he's going to just slam us after this video. I know. I'm okay with because. That's okay. No, because we can another, take. Another, you know, just a yet another video that I'll just be like, oh, okay. <laughs> we can take the heat off of Jake for a while. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're only here to help Jake out. We're explain not. the Southern okay. Stars. I explain it because I think it's an enclosed system. Right. So if it's a, it's a lot easier to explain it in a closed system because you have multiple projection systems. That's and some people is. will say, no, that's not a naturalistic way to, to describe it. That's a fail, Mark. You shouldn't describe it that way. And to that you say, well, there are other models. Look at those. There are other right? models. You want to go with it? Cool. I'm just saying the model I use is pretty easy to, to understand. There is not a lot of loose ends in my model. It's, if you don't like the dome, fine. You don't have to like the dome. There are other, you can, you can try to do stuff, but you're going to have, the tough one's going to be the atmosphere. Try to work with the atmosphere on an infinite plane. Eventually you're going to have to box it in. Yeah. So that part, that part leads me closer to there being some kind of enclosure for sure. Um, Nathan Oakley talked, we were talking about the seventies says I wasn't alive in the seventies. So I reject that it existed. And Paula knowledge scavenger comes back with, I wasn't alive in the seventies either. But I had to go to high school anyway. <laughs> yep, me too. Feeling half alive and sitting in high school, learning things that you'd never remember and that didn't have anything to do with real life. At least that's my experience. Pete Shea says, by the way, I did read the question on the eclipse, the, the best flat earth answer for the, for the eclipse. I don't have one yet. But the best answer, I think someone's probably going to discover it. I think something's moving in front of the sun. I don't think it's just the sun display system. I think the moon probably is. The moon object is moving in front of the sun. But the optics involved and the tech involved, pff, you got me. I mean, if let's put the mainstream science can't explain it now. You ask the average astrophysicist, as they did on camera, right. they can't explain it even in the, the uh, heliocentric model. So we're still working out the details on the eclipse. I want to say hi to Caveman444. And Wendy Blank, who says Mount Davis, Pennsylvania is what caused me to question the globe education, seeing nothing but an extended plane over that many miles. It didn't make sense based on what we were being taught. That's very good. That's very personal as well. It wasn't a video. It was something that you saw with your, with your own eyes. So Aren't that's really the best, really the best actually. Then, oh, I get it. People are saying that once you hear the clues, when you listen to them the second or third time, you actually can go to sleep. Because you've heard it. So it's not new information and you're not freaking out. Yeah, you try to listen to it the first time. Yeah, you're not sleeping. Um, Pute from Sweden, Sweden says Pute is short for Patrick in Sweden. 
So hi again, Patricia. Oh, okay. So it's a Patricia and Patrick being somewhat of the same family name. Will I need a solar filter to film the eclipse with my P900? Uh, consult your manual for that. And a matter of fact, just type do, type it into Google right now. Can I P900 sun settings? You should be able to find it. I want to say hi to Zoe. Be here in love. She says, I'm late. Timaeus adds, I still wonder why the moon comes down from the top in a lot of eclipses. I mean, I know what you're going to say, Mark. The what? The moon coming down from the top in a lot of eclipses. It shouldn't be that way. You're just going to say it's part of the display system. It's and part of the display system. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying it's a perfect system. I'm just saying that it does what it does. We, again, we, if we can do it in a planetarium, we can do it here. I see the moon doesn't exist is an artifact of the sun interface reflecting off a watery mirror-like barrier above thoughts. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Again, we don't we don't know the exact optics of what's going on. Look, think of the, the optics that produce sun dogs. We don't know them, but we've seen them and, and we can duplicate them with some sort of reflective surface or the interesting fact that rainbows cannot be created indoors without both water and a reflective surface. Hmm. I've seen people do sun dogs with a bowl. Very interesting. Exactly. And a lighter. Yes, as well. Yeah, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Grupp. Yes, exactly. Flat Earth heavyweight who still cannot get about. That's a boxing term. Elspeth Awake says uh, to D. Marble, who said he spent quite some time listening to the clues, says, I couldn't stop watching the Flat Earth clues once I started. Mm, yeah, me too. Lord. That was me doing free software and <laughs> literally and you know knew nothing about saying, oh it's so highly produced those clues i know i could it's hear like... you recording a piece and then stopping and then recording another piece almost yeah. as if you were doing it with a cassette deck i mean i'm not saying it wasn't professional but i'm not saying it was professional it was oh no no it was good you did a good job but it's not it wouldn't be something that would be on mainstream let's just the clues were literally made the, like the transitions i literally hit the default button because mm -hmm. i knew nothing about video editing and uh, now i've gotten better now i know how to steal a lot of things <laughs> from other people mm -hmm. flat earth leads to theft well production value <laughs> you know, little clips little clips that you know are not copyrighted like the blowing up of the earth Grab that from something. It's amazing, actually, the science websites I can grab stuff from that they'll never that they'll they'll never care about. The only people yeah. that copyright anything are the celebs. Uh, FPV Angel is here saying hello to you and I and all the rest of the fine people in the chat. Hello, FPV Angel. Okdina Walker says, "When I first watched the clues, I spent weeks not sleeping, not eating, just researching." Oh yeah, I remember those moments with fondness, right. actually. Um, and by the way, Dean Marble's comment, simple, works well. Let me let me comment on that real quick because you saw, I, I sent you the the little thing I posted on the NPR website because the NPR was was doing this. And I said, I said, the reason why science is losing is because science cannot make it simple enough. And by that, <clears throat> and I'll give you, I'll give science right now a little leg up, give you a chance to to fight back because you put up really nothing so far. Don't give them a chance. No, no, I'm going to lie to us I, again. I'll give them something because they, they can't help us up. Their nature of what they are doesn't allow them to make it any simpler. And that is eight inches per mile squared takes a while for even the average person on the street to understand once you tell it to them. Most people don't know what it means. That is a really basic equation. And your average scientist is going to, well, may or may not know how the math works. <clears throat> the point is, is if the average person doesn't understand that, and you try to combat flat earth with geometry and trig and calculus, you've lost them. You've right. lost the audience. You, you, literally, you might as well be talking static. Their minds will glaze over. No, they and, will. They yeah. I've seen people glaze over with eight inches per mile squared. In you fact, they go what? eight inches per mile, literally, and they go, I go squared, and they go. Yeah, I had to look up what that meant, and I know that math is not my strong suit. Never has been. I am never afraid to admit about the things I don't know anything about. Uh, and that was one of those things when I heard that I had to look it up and think about it and before I grasped it. So yeah. I'm not alone. Yeah. So sci and the guy that responded to me, in fact, in fact, here, let me, let me see if I can find it real quick. One second. Let me see if I can find the, the NPR Rick, the response from NPR. And caveman 444 has something interesting who says, Patricia, what celebs should we invite to the conference? Hmm. I don't know. That's what, a tough one. 
inviting celebs to the conference and do well, celebrities really matter i mean if Kyrie Kyrie irving doesn't have a team it'd be nice to grab him right yes because he's going to be traded i mean the uh, people who uh, that's a good question i mean if we have to pick people to invite what celebrity would be the right celebrity to get there it would be flat earther celebrities but there are people that i wish would become flat earthers that are celebrities but then again, with celebrities, how can you trust that they're even real or legit? They're actors. So I know there's probably a few of them that are actual real people operating independently. I mean, controlled. like if the trailer park boys decide to show up, mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. you know, they there did a thing on it and they weren't against it necessarily. Right. That would be interesting. It would be interesting. Now, would they be doing it for the entertainment value? Yes, of course. I mean, in fact, that's what we're kind of expecting, that there's going to be people there that are gonna to try to extract an entertainment value out of the conference. And hey, you know what? If they can pull it off and and it and it doesn't paint us as long as they're not mean, sure, go for it. I mean, fine, if Conan shows up and you know, just starts making faces at us, you know, once once we answer things, you know, like the microphone, then he takes the microphone back, he goes, uh-huh. He mm -hmm. looks at the camera, you know, those little things. Yeah. Don't be mean if you can help it, but show up because of course it's gonna be entertaining. It's polarizing. That's Mr. what it Maddie is. Mr. Matty Moses says Kyrie, like you mentioned, or Eddie Bravo would be great. If Eddie they Bravo came. would be good. Yeah. Hey, look at T. O. B. D. Marble adds B. O. B. to the list. Yep, that'd be great. B. O. B. would be would be awesome. And of course, you know, I still half expect that they will try to throw Bill Nye at us because Bill Nye went to the dinosaur museum. You know, the the yes. church dinosaur museum. He actually showed up with a camera crew, so. All planned out months in advance. Let's be real. Neil Neil has said on camera he will not be crashing this thing. Will will they hold him up to it? I don't know. Marilyn Wiseby says Mickey Rourke. Wouldn't that be crazy? Now I know he's not a flat earther, but What's that would be interesting. Lately? He had a bunch of crazy plastic surgery, and it's been from several years, and he looks ghoulishly frightening. Well, no, no, I knew that because he he did you know he came back. He had a massive uh, comeback. You yes. know, because he, he, he didn't even win the Oscar for the wrestler. Yes. And uh, but again, you know, you, you pay for your mistakes. I mean, anyone that when he was the top of his game decides he's going to go into amateur boxing. And his boxing style was basically no defense. <laughs> just throw as many punches as you can. And he just got hit so many times. His face was a mess after yeah, that. Yeah, but I think he got too fearful of aging, which is why he did all the plastic surgery. It wasn't just because of a beaten up face. Well, yeah, but the the shortly lived boxing career did not help. If yeah. you watch some of his box, and seriously, he was getting crunched out there. He was dating a model, and I think that that mm. whole vanity lifestyle. Mr. Maddie Moses says, "Who do you wish was a flat earth, flat earther, Patricia?" I'm curious. I have a couple of celebs I'd like to be flat earthers. I would like Morrissey of the Smiths to be a flat earther. He has a lot of conscious. Uh, thoughts about society, the world. He hates royalty. He's awake, kind of, but asleep as well. But it would be great if he totally snapped awake. Um, and it would it would suit his personality so well to be a flat earther. So I would vote for Morrissey. D. Marble, I was going to say MC Hammer too, because I heard the rumor. But D. Marble just said that that was not the real MC Hammer. You can't touch him anyway. I don't have a comeback for that. <laughs> Your joke about Math Powerland inventing everything was the best one of the show. <laughs> I can't top you. Can't top oh, you. No, wait. Oh, I've got, I got it. That MC Hammer was not too legit to quit. Too legit. Oh, yeah. Too yeah. legit to quit. I had Harvest Gold MC Hammer pants at one point in my life. Really? Har Harvest Gold. Color. Dancing around in the living room, singing "Turn That Mother Out." No, no, no. I wore them to a concert, not MC Hammer, with heels, and that it was a good look at the moment. All right. Is there anything else we need to do? Um, Rad Tech Me says hi. All good to hear your voices. I haven't watched you for a couple of weeks. Hey, um, let me see who else. CC saying we live in a closed system. I think so too. Oh my gosh, Nathan Oakley. He said what you should have said. What? It, George Clooney, <laughs> you would want to, you'd want to be the person who'd come out as a celeb flat earther. Why'd you miss that? Your one opportunity. Damn it. Yeah, um, but he's, he's so, he's so 
he, he lives in such rarefied air. Yes, this is he true. He does not go out and he doesn't get caught in any compromising. And uh, Ginger Sugarbush is saying, I bet Mark Sargent hopes George Clooney was a flat earther. And then there's all the controversy about his wife, Amal, uh, who I, looks like a former model of some sort, who's a, a very well-spoken, intelligent woman. I think she's a right. lawyer. And people saying she's a, a, she's transgender and her baby's fake and all of that. So, hmm. yeah. Dave Hinkle is asking if Tila Tequila is going to be there. Yeah, I don't think so. You know what? I wouldn't, this is a horrible thing to say about a fellow human being, but I don't really have any desire to meet Tila Tequila. But the other people that we've mentioned that people have said B.O.B. and yeah, all of these AJ, other people. AJ Styles. Show. Oh, oh, hell, Marcellus from ESPN. The, uh, um, the, the co-host of Sports Nation. Um, Mar Marcellus would be outstanding. Marilyn Wiseby is continuing to say Mickey Rourke, and she's hoping that it wouldn't be Trump. Morgan Freeman, Jason Fox says. Oh, he'd be awesome. He would be awesome with that I voice. Think, he could convince way, everybody guys, just by speaking. If you guys voice. want to do any mass emails, go out and email Subaru, whoever's heading up marketing at Subaru, because they have the world is flat engine campaign. You can look it up, Subaru right. Flat Earth or Subaru World is Flat. And they've, got, they've had a campaign running for the last two years. From their uh, boxer boxer engine, uh, flat Earth vegan Amy says, "I can hear Morgan Freeman say that flat Earth is the truth. You better catch on." <laughs> that voice of his, yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, let's see, <coughs> uh, a bunch of other people. Somebody says the band Rush should be flat Earthers. That'd yeah, there's good. a lot of bands. Uh, Pee Wee Herman, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, well, REM should be invited. Oh yeah, that's true. REM. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I've had a fun time on yeah. this show. Um, I'm glad you survived your Houston. Did they, did they have any idea? I'm sorry. I didn't. Oh, of when they are going to run the article? It could be even a couple of months. They're going to run it sooner than that. Well, this was the photos. They already had come here. Was it last month? And spoke with me privately. Um, right. Just Carrie. The, the well, right. Yeah. Right after the Denver thing. So and we sat over on my couch over there and, and, and had a had a drink, a soft drink. I don't the, mean a literal soft drink. I mean not alcohol. And uh, she, she, we talked about cats. She has cats, and we had a nice little bonding. And then after she left, I thought, you know what? This woman could write horrible stuff and kind of hurt flat Earth about sure. me. But I got this feeling about her that she's very open-minded. I don't think she's going to do a hit piece on flat Earth. The, the odds of a hit piece are rare, and that is, I mean, look at the hundred plus interviews that I've done. The people that you talk to, they're so back on their heels because they don't know what to make of it. It's so stunning to them. They don't have, they, it takes a while before you, you go forward and, and try to go after it. In the beginning, you're like, what is happening? This guy's serious. I want to hear this. <laughs> you know what? What are they, I mean, they, they stayed longer than I thought they were going to. Yeah. And when they, they came in my house, I was, you know, still doing some stuff before the show, like feeding the cats to keep them occupied before they, so they won't run in. Right. You know, and they were walking around and you know, they got a feel for who I am as a person because they're walking around in my house. And I, I wonder now, Carrie had been here before. But the guy, the photographer Mark, had not. And I wonder if he was thinking like, wow, this is where a flat earther lives. Hmm. I was thinking it would be a fill in the blank. Right. Uh, mom's basement or, right. you know, underground cave or TP well, out I, in the I, middle I, of nowhere or in a tent or um, not that any of those things are bad. I'd love to live in a TP or a tent sometimes. The pocket wrappers everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. So. Yeah. There's but, no, no such thing as a typical flat earther, how we live, how we look, where we live. Uh, that's the beauty of this. It's a huge unifier. One thing we know for sure is that every one of us has one of these decks, right? Oh, crap. It's only us. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, anyway, oh, but, I want to say hi to DITRH as well, because the, those cards just reminded me of him and passing things back and forth. and. Let, let me end it with you on this, which is... Mm -hmm. You're uh, going to end it with me? No. Not after this long. This is a long time coming, baby. <laughs> the, uh, you knew it had to come know, to the, um, the, the, the Denver Post ran that article within, I think, a week after shooting the pictures, I think. so Because they, they went to a meetup on a Tuesday, and I think they waited till I think, a week later before they, before they ran it. So who knows? Maybe they're looking for something. I think it'll be great. So... Houston Chronicle. Hope you, hope you guys do something with it. I will let everybody know when the article comes out and 
let's hope it's a good one. Uh, Houston, Texas in general, waking up to flat earth with NASA right here. Um, whew, I mean, I hope they don't publish even the neighborhood I live in <laughs> because my house yeah. might be firebombed. They are, they are going to, the, the, the write-ins for this are going, uh, to, because you have so many retired NASA people. Well, okay. actually, I don't know if they retire in Texas, but there's going to be enough of them out there. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Oh, well. Yeah. Thanks to everybody in the live chat and those who are watching this at a later time. If you have not already, would you please subscribe to my channel? That would be nice. Give the video a thumbs up. Maybe share it with somebody. And uh, that's Mark Sargent. And I, the same goes for his channel as well. Thanks to all my Flat Earth friends who are mods. I don't have that many mods. I kind of change them up every, every now and again. And thanks to all the great video content providers who are out there doing the hard work, the work I myself don't do, doing the experiments and, and, and out in the trenches, so to speak. Paul on the Plane is going to be my guest tomorrow, August 3rd, on the Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes at 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. GMT. And I guess that's it, right? That's it? That's the That's end. all we got. That's all I got. All right, then. See you guys later. Keep it flat. Mmm. Dang. <laughs>